So I would like to know a little bit about, uh, you've had a collaboration, all three of you, for decades. Tell me about that. How did it get going? How has it worked? Perhaps for me it's the easiest to explain because uh, I entered Peter Somogyi's lab when I was uh, 20 years old, just starting the second year in university. And uh, although I was undergraduate at Ötvös Lorand University, uh, I didn't find their uh, serious enough uh, neuroscience lab, but they recommended me to go to Semmelweis, uh, where in the anatomy department, led by Janusz Szentágotai, there was a young, talented biologist who was only 30 years old, but uh, already spent some time in Oxford, developed new techniques, which uh, many uh, people from all over the world got interested in. And uh, then I knocked on his door and he welcomed me, and uh, that's how we, I started to work with Peter. And then obviously most of my first papers, uh, in the first several years, were joint uh, papers with Peter. And then with the uh, jury, uh, we learned about each other uh, through a common collaborator in Sweden, Anders Björklund in Oxford, uh, uh, sorry, in, uh, in Lund. And uh, <coughs> uh, Yuri worked with him, I worked with him, and then I think it was Anders who introduced uh, us to each other. <laughs> and then uh, uh, in the field uh, which we were jointly interested with Anders, became our first uh, joint project, which involved the uh, grafting of embryonic uh, brain tissue to the adult host animals and uh, looking at the development of uh, these grafts, the electrical activity they generated and the correlated structure. And that began in, 19, that began in 1985. <coughs> so uh, the collaboration with Peter is, uh, dates back to 30 years and that with Yuri to 25 years. Has it meant something to you that, that you all have come out of Hungary? That, has that made, made it a sort of closer collaboration? Well, it's obvious that uh, uh, if we know somebody and you invest time and in, invest your thoughts and inspirations and plans into an interaction, the number one thing is trust and uh, it is much easier to trust each other if we know each other's background, we know, we share each other's value systems, and that certainly facilit facilitated the interactions. Of course, it doesn't mean that within a country or a nation you can't have competitors, enemies, uh, etc. but uh, knowing each other's value systems uh, greatly facilitated uh, the interactions and in fact at one stage uh, both Tamás and uh, Yuri were working jointly uh, in Oxford uh, where Yuri was teaching both of us, both Tamás and me, uh, electrophysiology and how to record um, the effect of ischemia uh, on the brain, what happens, it's a very common condition in, in humans, uh, what happens in the brain uh, when the blood supply stops, either because of heart failure or uh, some other reason, and uh, Yuri showed us how the brain goes completely quiet and then it comes back. Uh, I never forget that. Uh, in Oxford, and from that we had joint publications uh, in the uh, early 80s. Uh, then uh, for me the, the link came with the realization that those structures that I have been identifying with Tamás over years are organized in that very restricted way because they serve time. And that I learned from Yuri, that time is the principal organizer in neuronal interaction. Everything else, molecules, genes, uh, connection synapses, are the servants of time. Can you explain that a little more? Uh, so one thing that fascinates me, uh, there are a couple of things that fascinate me. One of them is uh, time management. So if I look at uh, smallest animals, such as, let's say, a mouse or a human or an elephant, it doesn't matter the size of the brain, the 
the temporal management is exactly the same. What I mean by that is that if I look at your sleep spindles that happened over the night uh, thousands of times, uh, it's not only the same frequency, but also has the same dynamic. It lasts for about the same time. If I look at another state, such as slow oscillations, exactly the same time, gamma oscillations that are bad in schizophrenics, that are important in, in attention, uh, every single time we are aroused, it's there. Other, other patterns are exactly the same, give or take 50%. So how is it that you grow a structure so enormously from this small size to a huge size, one thing remains constant, is timing. Everything is enslaved to this. And I, I think this recognition only penetrates these days, the thinking of neuroscientists, that everything is enslaved into this. And this is where my collaborators, Tomasz and, and, and Peter, comes in, because I always wanted to understand is that what structures allow this to happen. There is a structure called the cerebellum, it's a very complicated thing, but nevertheless, it's very simple in a sense. It's almost like thousands and thousands of computers placed parallel into each other. In fact, there is a saying, the brain is a parallel computer. No, the brain is not. The, the cerebellum is a, is, a, is a parallel computer because they are doing their jobs, the different elements, independently. Now, the neocortex and the hippocampus are organized totally differently. The whole idea there is that whatever is computed locally, it's broadcasted globally. And whatever is, whatever is the global state of the brain confines what goes on, on locally. And so if this is so important, then the structure is that it serves must be different. And, and this is where Peter described, and he's the champion of, of interneurons. I don't know where you are now, Peter. It's 21 or different type of interneurons whose function is nothing else but serving time management. And in fact, uh, all three of us had a, a very early pioneering inspirational work uh, of an international collaboration, just like now ours is from Janos Senkatagotai, Sir John Eccles, and Masao Ito, published a pioneering book in um, 1967, The Cerebellum as a Neuronal Machine. So they try to do more or less the same what we all do and much of neuroscience do today. Account for the components in terms of what the final outcome of the computation is, except that they didn't have access to all the necessary data, so their solution uh, today is not accepted, but it showed what the future was, and in fact we are just putting in the detail into that vision that we have to understand the components and their temporal interactions and of course those temporal interactions are delivered by molecules. Mm -hmm. so, so that's where uh, drugs interact, what uh, Tamash works on, on those components, the molecules help to deliver that accurate time. So you asked about the why Hungarians. Uh, I asked this question many times from myself and I, the answer is that I think it has maybe some component is the Hungarianness. But there is a more important uh, and more perhaps deeper thing is that when I was looking for structural support for dynamic, uh, and I look around, then I found that there were anatomists, there were physiologists, there were psychiatrists, that, that there were these separate professions and people didn't interact with each other. So where do I find an anatomist who cares about dynamic? And maybe this is Santa Agotai's uh, inherited information that was was there already in Peter's mind, and uh, maybe this is how Tomasz was infected, that these were the individuals I could comfortably talk to about my problems because they were perceptive. Mm -hmm. but tell me a little bit about Hungarian, uh, Hungarian tradition for neuroscience and Sentagotai. What kind of, of environment did, did he build, um, and what has come out of it? Sentagotai came from my city, Page, which was an incredible, uh, concentration of minds uh, after the Second World War. My mentor was Ender Groschan, who was uh, teaching us about the dynamic of the brain. And then 
Szent Nikolaj went up to Budapest, he established his world famous uh, uh, anatomy institution, and unfortunately, I think this is where the interaction has broken for quite a long time before we united again. I think the other reason why they did not directly collaborate was because the techniques were not yet available that allowed the joint uh, uh, structural and functional analysis of these circuits. These uh, methods became available <coughs> uh, during uh, our studies and uh, some of these uh, approaches were in fact designed or developed by mm. the three of us. And namely this is uh, <coughs> uh, the the uh, possibility to structurally study and identify neurons that were previously studied electrophysiologically in the uh, normal and uh, living brain. And uh, I think uh, that probably uh, led us to this kind of joint work which has been in the dreams of Saint Agutta and, and, uh, and Andre Grashtian and we are definitely delighted that, that these dreams of the two uh, great scientists uh, came to uh, an existence uh, during our collaboration. I, I think there is an important message here is that in small countries the charismatic individuals can not only change the future of other people but also they can can change the 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 reputation of the entire country. Yeah, but of course Santagutai and Grashchan uh, <coughs> grew up in, in very good schools uh, and in the first half of the uh, 20th century Hungary was a very open country so uh, neuroscientists like uh, Len Hoshek, Kish, they traveled widely uh, to Italy. Most of the connections were through Germany so uh, German uh, educational system and scientific connection had a strong um, influence on Hungary. So they, they were exposed to the full, full international progress, which sadly then was stopped by the communist takeover after the uh, Second World War, when a, a closed uh, society survived. And these great individuals managed to keep their inspiration and keep up the standards of the work. But you we have all three been here in Hungary in the 1970s, I suppose. Uh, yeah. What was it like to be a scientist here the, back then? It was... Uh, I, I perhaps can reflect on this because I was ex exposed to what was to be a scientist in Oxford. So as a 23-year-old uh, 23 undergraduate, I had a research year in Oxford as a visiting student and, and I experienced freedom for the first time, the freedom of the mind and freedom from hierarchy that the um, head of department or the lecturer who hosted me treated me as an intellectual equal. And that was very different even from the atmosphere of the Santa Agata Institute, which was extremely hierarchical and, and authoritarian. Uh, so, so it was a very different world altogether. Uh, but uh, I came back, graduated, uh, experienced this as my first job. The good example I could tell you, what was it like in the 70s Hungary? Uh, Santagutai, because of his age, had to relinquish his chairmanship of the department to a much more um, restricted-minded individual uh, who decided that this um, coming and going late at night and Sundays and Saturdays from the laboratories was an uncontrolled risk for uh, the department. So uh, she confiscated our, the head of the department confiscated all keys to the department and changed the locks. And uh, Tamás and I were very friendly with the workshop um, engineer and we chiseled our own keys from the key that the engineer had. We chiseled our own keys to be able to work outside the hours that we were permitted uh, to go into the laboratory and, and carry on regardless. <laughs> so that, there were lots of difficulties. Just to, to tell you one, um, 
There was a special kind of scholarship given to